Testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. This is just to see how the audio is going to work. All right, in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to bring footage into Premiere and just do some basic editing with it. So once you've got your files captured, you'll be able to find, I've got a folder called footage, and so that's where all my footage is, and you can see all the different files here. Well, to import these into Premiere, it's actually pretty easy. You can just drag them in, or you can actually take the entire folder and just drag it right into Premiere, and you'll see that it will um, bring in that folder with all of the files in it just as well. Now, it is important, of course, that you make sure that the files that you are working with are the same settings as your sequence. That's always important, and we did that when we first created the, the sequence. Uh, created the sequence. However, you can click on a sequence and go to the sequence settings and just take a look at what you've got there. You'll notice that it says, it's kind of grayed out, but it says DV NTSC, um, lower frame, it says it's going to be previewing as NTSC. It doesn't really tell me that it's widescreen here. Oh, there it is. D1 DV NTSC widescreen so I know that these are the correct settings now if it's not you can always make a new sequence so we can go um, new so I'll go file new sequence and then I can choose the correct settings for that new sequence so one of the really cool things about using Premiere Pro CS 4 and 5 I guess is that each sequence can have its own individual settings so I told you to be careful about when you created your sequence or your project to make sure you chose the correct sequence settings to begin with. But kind of a hidden thing is that you can actually have multiple sequences all with their own settings. So of course the settings that we want are DV NTSC widescreen because that's the footage we're dealing with right now. I'm not going to worry about that because I've already got a sequence that's set up. Now, my sequence currently, if I double click on it, shows me that I've got nothing in there at all. And over on the right is my sequence window. So that shows me that's what I've got on my edit timeline, which I have nothing. In order to bring up the footage, you just find the footage and double click on it. And then you'll be able to watch it in the preview or source window. Now, to use these, com these uh, controls here, it's not too difficult. You'll notice that the controls um, have icons that you probably recognize already things like play and stop this is uh, the room tone so it's not a very exciting file I'll just go to the next one this way we'll have at least some motion going on um, so we can play the file and we can stop it we can also use the bar underneath to scrub that file or we can click and drag on the blue um, timeline indicator to scan through that file as well. Now we're going to have to scan through a lot of video to be able to find where you want to start your edits and where you want to end your edits. And that's one of the most important things that you learn, are those two, um, the two keyboard things that you need here, or two icons. So the first one is setting an endpoint. You want to kind of scan through, so I know right there I've got Ron Dane in the shot so I'm gonna move over until he's not in the shot anymore and what I'm gonna do is choose my endpoint right there now I'm gonna scan through the file and if I want to listen one of the key, uh, keyboard shortcuts that you'll use a lot is going to be the spacebar so that allows me to hear what's being said and I can hear that she finishes her line and then she starts to hand over the papers and I know I'm gonna make a cut right there when her papers are, are up so I'm gonna go ahead and hit my endpoint there or the out point so I've got my um, endpoint I can go to that point and go to the out point and see what it looks like and if I want to see what that edit looks like I can play the in to out Now the preview might not look great. Welcome to class. Put your books away. We're going to have a pop quiz today. So that's what my final edit is going to be. And so now, in order to put this down on the main timeline, I want to make sure that I place my timeline indicator. 
this is the sequence timeline indicator, where I want to place that footage. And I've got a couple different choices. I can just click and drag it straight down, or I can actually uh, click on the buttons right here. One is called insert and the other one is called overlay. And we'll find out what the difference between those is in just a second. If I do insert, you'll notice that I just inserted that particular um, selection down onto the main timeline. Now I'm going to go to the end here. You'll notice that I'd, I'd like to really make sure that my uh, timeline indicator is right at the end of that particular edit. So one of the things that you're going to learn is that you always have to press down the modifying keys, such as the shift key. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and you'll see it snaps right to that point. And by holding down the shift key, it'll snap to the beginning or end of any cut, which is what you want to do. Because you might try, you know, and you think that this line is right on it, but if you zoom up, you'll see that you're not on it at all. Well, I happen to be on it. I happen to be pretty good. But usually you're going to be something like that. It's just not going to be right. And you'll see that I'm just a couple frames, even one frame off from where the edit point is. So that's why you hold down that shift key always. All right, now if I want to go to the next file, I need to find out which one it is. So there is a shot where she's got the paper up in the top. So I'll do my in point and the out point right there, right afterwards. Now the problem is, is that she's actually saying something when she's got the hand up. So I have to go look back at this one. And she doesn't say anything um, in that shot, which is good, because now I can have her say, would you please pass these around in the next shot. So if I can match cut the action of that being up to this right here, if I go back to the end point, so basically your hand's in the same position. I might even want to cut it during the action. So I'm going to just go back just a little bit away. Go back just a little bit. And then I'm going to make this go back so it's in the middle of the action. So if I look at that one, she's starting the action. And then this one, she's finishing the action. Let's see if that cuts together pretty well. So let's watch that edit. What do you guys think? Looks pretty good. It actually is even better to cut on the action as it's happening rather than in the middle of something. Because if I get the, the paper to the top and then try and cut to the next one where it's at the top, and continuing, then that's where you're more likely to see continuity errors. So you want to cut in the middle of the action if you can. So that's why we take that's why we take a multiple uh, shots of the same action from different angles. All right, so I've got that kind of set there, and let's see where the next edit should be. The next edit might be if I go down a few more shots. Here we go. So he's received it and he's starting to pass it out. So I'm going to put that there. See how that edits. So not too bad. So this is the basics that we want to go through with being able to decide how we're going to edit this footage together. Is you have to try and match the actions on those match cuts in the middle of the action if possible and it takes a long it takes a lot of tweaking and reviewing things and so one of the things that we're also going to learn is that there are certain editing tools that will really help you out some of those editing tools um, I gave you a handout for you'll find them on the Adobe Primer on page 28 and uh, these are the ripple edits rolling edits slip edits and slide edits now they might not necessarily work perfectly in this instance here, but I'm going to show you exactly what these particular tools do. And that's going to be in the next tutorial. So let's go on, and I'm going to stop here.